And I have two very exciting and important things to share with you today. First of all, I want to remind everyone about our two Sunday morning services that will be kicking off on Easter Sunday. Easter happens this year on Sunday, April 4th, so mark your calendars and make your plans to help us spread the word about our two new Sunday morning services. The first service begins at 9.30 a.m., and the second service will be at a new time, 11.15 a.m. So help us spread the word about our new services, and more importantly, spread the word about the good news of Jesus Christ. I also want to let you know that we're launching brand new prayer meeting gatherings. We're going to be meeting every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. So those of you that have to go to work or even school can come up to the church and we can have a powerful time of seeking God together. We're also going to be holding prayer gatherings on Thursday afternoons at the noon hour. So 12 p.m. on Thursdays, we also invite you to come join us for a time to seek the Lord. Because I believe that God is growing our church and helping us to reach out to more people than ever before. But most importantly, we want to be growing closer to God and reaching out to Him like never before. So come join us, get excited, help us share uh, the good news of Jesus Christ and the big news of what's happening at Lakeview. And we can't wait to see what God's going to do next. Hello everybody, I am Mia Gayton, your First Impression Team Coordinator here at Lakeview Church. The First. The First Impression Team is super excited about going to two service on Easter Sunday, April 4th. And as you can imagine, our team is growing. Yay! What you may not know is our First Impression Team has the ministry of the first touch. What is that, you may ask? Well, we are the first ones to touch our guests with joy and kindness as we welcome each one through our doors. And because we are growing, we are asking you to join our team. To join the First Impression Team, see either me, Pastor Mark, or simply drop a connection card in the offering box letting us know that you are interested and we will get in touch with you. Remember, first impression makes all the difference. Hi, Lakeview Church family. If you want to become involved with the ministry of Lakeview Church, your first step is to go through Growth Track. Growth Track is now available online at www.lakeviewpeople.com slash growth track. On the website, you can watch the first three videos and complete steps one through three of your Growth Track manuals. Manuals are available for free on the information table at the church. Step four involves a meeting with our pastoral staff to answer any questions you may have and to help get you plugged into a ministry team. You will be a blessing to others and it will also bless you to be serving on a ministry team. One example of a ministry team is the worship team. We are currently recruiting musicians and are specifically in need of people trained to play drums, guitar, and keyboard. So if you have any skill in these areas and feel called to lead in worship, Get started on Growth Track and take the next step to making a difference. Hello Forever family, it's Sam here. I want to invite you to Celebrate Recovery every Tuesday night at 6.30. Celebrate Recovery is for anyone struggling with any hurt, habit, or hang up. Also, we now have the landing for grades 7 through 12 and nursery for ages 4 and under. Celebrate Recovery is also good for anyone who knows someone struggling as well. Please keep in mind that we are still looking for people to volunteer. We need some nursery workers, people to work in the sound booth, also people who like to pray during altar call. Also, please be praying for this ministry. Thank you and God bless. Hey guys, it's Sarah Fulford, your licensed counselor here on staff at Lakeview. Some of the most common reasons why couples will seek out marriage counseling is communication has become negative. You feel like roommates. You feel like the children are what is keeping you together or when separation feels like it's the only solution. But you don't have to be in relationship trouble to go to counseling. Marriage counseling can help develop an honest conversation. Relationships improve when both sides are willing to learn new communication skills and to understand you're on the same team. My role as the counselor is to guide you through conflict resolution. I don't take sides. Instead, I will help problem solve and suggest options that both sides can agree on. My goal is to reestablish unity in the family. Every relationship and marriage have disagreements. There isn't a magic formula to mend a relationship, but it can start by being aware that support is valuable and available. 
For more information or to set up an appointment, go to lakeviewpeople.com slash counseling and send an online request. That goes directly to my email. You can also follow the Lakeview Counseling page on Facebook. Good morning, Lakeview family. Would you stand with us as we get ready to worship? Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5 say this, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Oh 
it all to peace the storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every rain at your name
silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Hallelujah. let's just lift our hands to the Lord just now Father we just worship you in this place right now we thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding we thank you that the darkness has to flee in the name of Jesus, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses to the glory of God. Father, we honor you today and we say there is no God, not in heaven, not in earth, that's like you. Father, we say that you're a God of mercy, that you're a God of all grace, and that your grace is unsurpassing, that you've called us to yourself. And you said, come close to me and humble ourselves before you. And as we humble ourselves before you and begin to acknowledge you in worship, that you come and that you inhabit these praises. We give you praise for that today. Lord, we thank you that our prayers, the prayers of the righteous do not go unanswered, but those prayers that have been put up for this day, that they will come to pass that those that can't see the blinded eyes, they will be opened. That those hearts that have been hardened, they'll be softened. And they'll come into your presence, worshiping you. We give you all the glory today. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn to somebody this morning. Give them a handshake, a hug. Tell them, hey, I'm glad to see you in the house of God today. Praise the Lord. We're glad to see you in the house of God today. Glad to see you at Lakeview Church. How many are happy to be here? Good, good. I like those big, woo. Can we do that all together just one time? Ready? One, two, three. Woo. All right. It's good to be in the house of God. Hey, let's welcome all of our folks that are watching online too. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you for being with us today at Lakeview Church online. Amen. Well, we want to let you know that in your seat pocket in front of you is a connection card. And if you're one of our guests today, if this is your first time, maybe your second time to be here, we want to acknowledge that you're here. And so if you'll fill out one of those uh, cards, Miss Mia, where are you? Stand up, Miss Mia. Let's welcome her back. Give her a big hand. Mia will meet you at the table out in the foyer. She has a gift for you if this is your first time. And so if you want to give us any prayer requests, let us know what God's doing in your life. You can also turn those in. Uh, and the at the very back on your way out, we have offering boxes. Just slip those in there, will you? And then also let me remind you that two times every week, we have an opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer as a corporate group. We do this every uh, Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. How many love 6 a.m.? Amen. I love when that alarm clock goes off and it's time to go pray. Amen. And we open up the house of God for you to pray at 6 a.m. 
and it's awesome to be here with all the ones that come out. We want to encourage you to come out. Also, on Thursday at noon, we have a prayer time then, Thursday noon and Thursday noon fasting. If you can't be here, join us Thursday noon on your lunch hour and praying and honor the Lord in a fast for just that meal. Ask Him to do something mighty in the life of another person over the weekend. Amen? God bless you. And so then, also, we have two more things coming up. Anybody know what next week is? It's Easter, and we have our Easter services next week. And going into our Easter service, we are going to have two services on Easter. Amen? We'll start at 9.30 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. And there'll be um, identical services, both at 9.30 and at 11.15. And the uh, online service will be at 11.15. And so we want to encourage you to come out. But we want other people to come. How many want other people to come? I want other people to come. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get together Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night to go pass out door hangers because everybody loves a door hanger. How many know that's true? We love door hangers. It gives so much information and lets you know that you can be with us on Sunday morning. Then the final thing I want to share with you, in your seat pocket in front of you are some envelopes as well. If you want to give today in our service, you're welcome to give in the service using an envelope. Again, we have the offering boxes in the back on your way out. You'll just uh, deposit your gift in there. Or there's two other ways that you can give here at Lakeview Church. Also, those ways are listed on your offering envelope. And so if you're not prepared to give, just take an offering envelope with you. You can give online. That information is on that envelope as well. Or you can text to give. The number's on the screen. Amen. How many would like to honor the Lord with our first fruits? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to honor you with our giving. Lord, I thank you that you gave so much for us. And today we honor you with our giving. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now to direct your attention to the screens for our pre-sermon uh, pre video. Amen. <laughs> God, how many of you out there, just being honest, this past year has been the best year you've ever had? <laughs> Three people. God bless, God bless your hearts. Uh, how many of you, no matter what's happened this past year, can still testify of the goodness of God in the midst of struggles? Yes. Can we just give him praise? Amen. Glory to God. And what we've been focusing on this month is living in joy, even when we're in crisis or in trouble or in heartache, hardship, when Jesus is with us, uh, that's really what that means. He's with us through it all. A friend that sticks closer than a brother, a friend that'll never leave us or forsake us. And if you're like me, I'm just really, really thankful for Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. 
And as we enter into this time, today is what's known as Palm Sunday and uh, what many uh, reflect upon is Holy Week leading up to Good Friday and then Resurrection Sunday. Church, I'm excited because I know the end of the story. Jesus didn't stay dead. He is alive and lives forevermore. He's seated at the right hand of God, and he's praying. He's interceding for us right now. Does that pump anybody else up in this place? God is good. Amen. And he's alive. And so we can trust in him no matter what else kind of mess we find ourselves in. And so today, I want to jump right into the message. Today's topic is living in joy for life. Because, you know, it's easy to be in joy in church when there's a lot of other people. It's easy to be in joy in the good moments. But anybody else ever had just a week of Mondays? Isn't that the best? (laughs) Or you just start off your Monday and you think it's going to be a good week and uh, just one situation, one crisis totally changes the trajectory of not only that day but the rest of your life. It's important that we understand we can be in joy even in those moments if we have Christ in us. That's the good news. The good news isn't that everything's always good. The good news is that God is always good. Amen. Amen. And as we looked to the book of Philippians, we've been walking through this book. This was a letter written by the Apostle Paul. And if you missed the other weeks, I'll just recap quickly. It's one of what they call the prison epistles which just means a letter written from prison. Paul was chained to a Roman guard, most likely. Uh, They typically, someone that had been accused of what he was accused of was given 24-hour surveillance, which meant he was chained up to a soldier, and he was stuck in a Roman prison as he's writing these words. And most of the book of Philippians, he's writing to the church at Philippi, most of the book is about joy, and he's writing it from prison. You know, I see people write their little blog posts, and they're like, got their coffee cup sitting next to it, and great view of the sunset, and they're like, I'm just, I feel like an overcomer today. <laughs> Bless your little heart. <laughs> You're so cute. Imagine writing that same sentiment in Paul's situation, living in a world where uh, literally a lot, of, a lot of the world, especially the major empire, Rome, You weren't so well thought of if you were a Christian. In fact, you could be put in prison like he was. And he says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, God inspired him to write these words. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and I long to see you, dear friends. For you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. And church, can I just begin today with being as Straightforward as I I can try to be, uh, we've had it easy for a long time in this country. The church has. Uh, Our struggles are, you know, maybe finances can be not what we want them to be. We face physical issues, physical problems. Those are real, and I don't want to discount those. But we have not seen persecution in this country like other parts of the world have. We're just starting to get a little taste of disagreement and argument. And I come with a bit of a warning. If if we don't really learn to live in joy, we're going to be in trouble the way things are going. Because prophetically and just, you don't even have to be that spiritual to, to recognize what's going on, the times that we're living in. I firmly believe the return of Jesus Christ could be very soon. But the Bible warns before his return happens, it's going to get worse before it gets better for his people. Jesus said, Jesus did say great things. He said things like, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, I will give you rest. And I thank God for that. But Jesus also said, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross. Get ready to do some heavy lifting yourself. And he warned, if you are my follower, they hated me, they hated Jesus. How much more so are they going to persecute and hate you? Y'all, that's part of the gospel as well. And it is good news because even though we go through that, Jesus goes through it with us. He is our strength. 
He, he is our hope, and the Holy Spirit is our guide and our comfort. And with God's help, we can make it through. But if we try to do it on our own, we won't be in joy. We'll be in a big mess. And so you got to learn the difference between happiness and joy. That's what we've been talking about these weeks. And Paul was living in joy even while in prison. He was able to write these words in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Just a few verses later, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, that's fun to say at church when I know everybody's going to shout and clap with me. Rejoice in the Lord always sounds great up here. It's totally different when delivered from a prison cell. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says, I will say it again, rejoice. And I wonder, I wonder, will we stand fast in our faith? Will we hold on to the joy that comes from the Lord, that joy that should be our strength, even if they come from our religious freedoms? Would we still serve God if it wasn't legal? Would we still stand up for our faith if everyone else in society is saying, sit down and shut up? Because can I tell you, a lot of people right now, they have difficulty sharing their faith when somebody shares a mean post on their social media page. We got to toughen up. Jesus did a lot for us. We're celebrating what Christ, the sacrifice he made for us. What sacrifices are we committed to, to following him? Paul said rejoice in the Lord always, and I know that is easier said than done, and there are things in our life that could be labeled as joy killers. We talked about a few of them last week, and if you want to follow along in your notes today, there's another scripture in verse 6 of Philippians 4. I'm just going to read the first part right now, and then we'll read all of it in a moment. But Philippians 4, verse 6, starts off with just telling us, do not be anxious about anything. Yeah, right, God. <laughs> Sounds great. It's hard to do. And there are things that I believe can steal our joy. And the enemy wants to remove our joy so he can put other things in our spirit that are not from God. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but the enemy sure will. He absolutely will. And things like panic attacks, anxiety attacks, depression, they're called attacks for a reason. They're not like anxiety suggestions. Like, hey, maybe you should worry about this. If you know the feeling of not being able to get your mind off of something, and it's haunting you. It's literally following you. No matter what you try to do to distract yourself, you can't get away from it. Can I tell you, you better get close to God because he's the only one that can set you free. But the good news is Jesus said, whoever Christ has set free, the word of God says, they are free indeed. I want to live like that. I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to live in frustration. I don't want to live in doubt. I want to live indeed, free indeed. Anybody with me? And we can through Jesus Christ. So don't be anxious about anything. Here's the things that I think, not everything, not an exhaustive list, but kind of the big things that cause anxiety in our lives. First of all, it's our worry, our worry. And that might be anything that causes you to worry. Maybe you worry about your, your job. Maybe you're just worried. If you've got eyes or ears, either one, you're probably wondering what's going on in the world with the government and with the pandemic and just all the unrest, that can cause worry. You may be worried about finances. You may have gotten a bad report from the doctor and you're worried about your health. That's real life, church. To live in joy doesn't mean to live in ignorance. We, we, know, we know this stuff ain't fun. That's why Jesus said, take up your cross. That's not like a fun activity. A lot of times we just think of following Jesus means come to church. No, it means daily take up your cross and follow him. Our worries can kill our joy, though, if we're not careful. The other thing that I think a step further beyond our worry is our why. Why is this happening? Our worries, that's the stuff that is happening to us. The question why can steal your joy because you'll, you'll get exhausted. You'll drive yourself crazy trying to figure out why is this happening to me. And that can almost be worse than the problem. You know, sometimes when uh, you might have health issues or someone you love has health complications and they can't quite figure out what's going wrong, that's almost more stressful than just knowing what the problem is. You know what I mean? Just that feeling of the unknown and the whys, that feeling of the unknown. I don't know why this is happening to me. We know the one who does. We know the one who knows the direction that we're on 
and the path that we should be taking. And that's what the final uh, joy killer can be, if we're not careful, is our who. See, the worry is, is the stuff. What is it that's killing our joy? The why is, why is this happening to me? Why, why are these occurring? And the who is, who can help me out of this? And again, you'll get frustrated if you search for the wrong person to be your who, to be your savior. Can I tell you, I, I look out at a bunch of you, and I like most of you. And so, <laughs> don't say ouch, I might admit you. But the thing is, some of the best people I know, honestly, are in this room. Like, I, there, there are those of you in here, I would legitimately trust you with my life or my family's life. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So anybody who fits that category, you can babysit for us anytime. <laughs> but in all seriousness, there are good people in here who I believe you're followers of Jesus. You know, we're not good on our own. There's none good but one. Jesus even said that. So it's okay for us to say that. But can I tell you, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm doing a whole lot better because of Jesus in my life, leading my life. But with all that, with as good as we are in here, can I tell you, while we are ambassadors for Christ, we are not substitutes for him. So if you're looking to anybody else but Jesus Christ, if you, uh, man, I, I just gotta plug this again. If you have not been listening to Pastor Mark's series on Wednesdays, about your identity in Jesus, if you're looking to find your identity in anyone or anything else but Jesus Christ, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Come on, somebody. And you will be disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. Hang around with anybody long enough, and they will let you down. But hang around with Jesus long enough, he will lift you up. Can anybody testify to that? Amen. It's all about Jesus Christ. And if he is our who, that can change those joy killers that can transform those heart-wrenching situations. He can bring hope where there never was before. He can make a way where there seemed to be no way. And Jesus gave these words in Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 25. He told his disciples, says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Can you see there? Those are our worries of life. Those are those joy killers. He says, don't worry about it. He goes on to say, consider the ravens. They do not sow nor reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? So he's literally answering all of these. Your worries of life, he said, don't worry about them. God takes care of the birds and he takes care of the flowers. He clothes them and feeds them better than you can do on your own. And he answers the why. He says, you're going through all this because God's the one in charge. He's the one watching over you. And it makes me think of my dad. I, y'all, I don't know if anyone else of you learned to swim like I did. We were literally out in a lake, a lake, y'all, not some chlorine pool where you can see the bottom. We're in a lake. And dad said, do you want to learn to swim? And foolishly, I said, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he let me out of the boat and was like, all right, swim as long as you can. It wasn't very long. And I, I got scared. I grabbed onto the boat, and I'm like choking water. And I'm like, Dad, I can't swim. He goes, look, just swim. And he said, and if I see you're in trouble, I'll come in after you. And I think of that of our Heavenly Father. We think, I can't do this. I can't do Y'all, the Word of God says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And our Heavenly Father's watching. You think, God, you've forgotten me. You've forsaken me. No, Jesus already went through that. He's the only one who really knows what it's like to have God. Because the, the, the Word of God says the Lord never leaves, never forsakes us. Only Jesus can truthfully say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because on that moment in the cross when he said it, he experienced what would be the most painful thing. We can't even imagine it because it's never happened to you. You have felt distant from God, but that's not because God left you. You got away from him. And when we realize God is watching over us, he's, he's looking down saying, you can do this, and when you get in trouble, I'll step in. So we need to trust him, just as Jesus said, don't worry about these things, because who of us by worrying can add a single hour to our life? But can I tell you, by worrying, you can lose a lot of hours of your life. The, the reverse of that is true. So here's the key to joy. 
One of, one of the keys found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. It says, how I praise the Lord that you were concerned about me again. Remember, Paul is writing this from prison. He says, I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. I'm not saying this because I am in need. God bless him, y'all. He's in, he's in prison. And he says, I'm not saying any of this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. How can he say these things while chained to this guard, while riding from this prison, while waiting to be executed? He was supposed to be on death row at this point. And he's saying all this stuff. We all, if we're, if we're real, we probably would have been writing a completely different letter from prison. Somebody send me bail money. Somebody come break me out. Help me. Because what do we do? And I, I, please know, I'm saying this to myself, so I, this comes with no judgment. But again, church, we've got to toughen up if we're going to accomplish what God has called us to do. Jesus has already done all the hard work for us. Let's do our part, what God has called We have responsibility in the kingdom of God. And I tell you, sometimes all we ever do is come to God with requests to him, but we don't follow any of his requests or commands to us from his word. That's not how this should work. And so when you see the example of Paul here, even in his worst moment, he's still testifying of good things. He's still saying, hey, I've learned how to be content with whatever, because he knows who God is. And see, that's the thing about joy, and I want you to write this down. We need to make the joy decision every day. Joy is a choice. One of our leadership principles here is we want all of our leadership to choose joy. You'll hear about it if you go through growth track, and if you haven't, I encourage you to check that out, because it's something we believe in. And it's not some warm, fuzzy, like, feel good, we're all gonna fake like we're happy all the time. I've been to those churches where you just smile at one another, you don't ever know anything about one another, and you pretend life is okay, and then somebody has a tragic event happen, and you think, how could that even happen? I thought they were all right. I thought they were okay. No, we're honest with one another. That's part of what our small group ministry is all about, is, is having people you can be open and honest with and bear one another's burdens. Can I tell you, you can't bear each other's burdens if you don't have burdens. So uh, burdens are part of it, y'all. It, it is what it is. But this is why we have ministries, I love the title of Celebrate Recovery. Yeah, because how many of y'all know, it's not just talking about all the bad stuff that's happened to you, or that even you've done to yourself. It's saying, that's not how I want to stay, and that's not who I am, and that's not what I will be. Amen, in Jesus Christ. So y'all, y'all need to get a hold of some of this truth. Y'all need to realize joy is a decision you make. It's not a feeling you feel. In fact, if you make the decision first, your feelings will follow. Or if you let your feelings lead, you'll make a lot of bad decisions. I can promise you that. I've done it. I've done it. We need to let our decisions lead, and then our feelings will follow. And we, we need to decide to live in joy. This is not on the screen or in your notes, but just something the Holy Spirit hit me with. And if there's room, you may want to write this down, just in your own words so you can remember it. When it comes to choosing joy... You need to recognize this truth. Jesus paid way too much for you to live in joy, for you to let anything steal that from you. He took back all that stuff from the enemy. What he did on the cross, the work that he completed for us. Y'all, anybody else with me? Jesus is enough for me. And Jesus has already done enough for me. He's done more than I deserve. I could spend the rest of my life trying to pay him back and I would fall short. He's done so much for me. So don't let anybody steal the joy that he died for us to have. His word, he said his own, in, in John 10, 10, he said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest, have it more abundant. He didn't say, I would come that you might have life and you would be miserable and not fulfilled. That's how a lot of people think, like, man, I'm just holding on till I get to heaven. Y'all, I'm going to pray what the Lord's prayer says. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not just waiting to get to heaven. I'm looking forward to going to heaven someday. But can I tell you what we, as the body of Christ, what Jesus actually declared? He said the kingdom of God is here now. 
And we're supposed to go declare the kingdom. We're supposed to go tell people about Jesus. And in so doing, push back the gates of hell, which cannot stand against us. So if they can't stand against us, we need to take a stand against the enemy and say, I'm living in joy in 2021. And there ain't nothing you can do to stop me. You can't wipe this smile off my face any more than you can wash the blood of Jesus off of my soul. Because what he's done for me has changed me forever. The old is gone. The old stuff passed away. The stressful me, the worried me, the depressed me, the anxious me is gone. I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. To Jesus be the glory. So we can live in joy for life. It's not just for Sundays or Wednesdays or when your favorite worship song comes on. Those are great, and God blesses us with those little God smiling at us moments, and you just feel it. But can I tell you, you don't always have to feel it to live it. When I eat vegetables, I don't just feel the nutrients go into my body. I don't. I have to make a choice to eat vegetables because they don't taste like chocolate. I don't even like chocolate that much, but it's better than broccoli. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to make a choice to do things that are good for us. See, the things that the enemy wants for us, they can be enticing, but they're not good for us. What God wants for us will give us this, what we're talking about, a joy for life. And I'm speaking directly to some people. I don't know who you are. I just know God impressed upon me. In fact, I woke up really early today, like 2 a.m., and I spent hours just in prayer because I had a burden for people that literally you're, you're on the brink of giving up on life. I just read about a, a, a pillar in our community. If you heard about Mr. Patterson taking his life there, they fear, is what it looks like. Now, I, I, don't, I know we're waiting for everything to come out, but those are the initial reports. Whatever happened, it's a tragic, tragic thing. We need to pray for that family. And I, I just... I'm heartbroken that there are times where we get to the point we think our life doesn't matter. And I want you to know I'm not mad at you for feeling that way. So if I seem intense, it's not directed to you. I'm mad at the enemy for lying to you. Because you are not any of what those lies say. And I want to encourage you. If the devil's telling you you're worthless, if the devil's telling you you're useless, that you have no point, you have no purpose, he is the father of lies, Scripture says. So that means all that mess is exactly the opposite of who you are. So the opposite of that is you are purpose-filled, you are bought with a price, you are worthy, you are so special to God that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. If nobody else would have come to Jesus, he would have done it for you. So don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Have a joy for this life that Jesus died for you to have. And, and part of why God doesn't just beam you up to heaven right after you get saved is because there's other people. They need to see the joy in us so they can come to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And how you can have that joy for life, three things real quick. Number one, pray about everything. Pray about everything. Notice what the blank doesn't say. Don't worry about everything. Don't gossip about everything. Don't complain about everything. Those are easier, but they're not good for you. Scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, here's that, that full verse. Do not be anxious about anything. And it doesn't just leave us hanging. It says, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And as we just prayed and sang about earlier, we should give our request to God with thanksgiving because we're giving our stuff to God. It's no longer your burden to carry. Cast all your cares upon him. It doesn't say cast some of them and keep the really bad ones for yourself. But we do that. We present our requests to God. And if we do that, this next part comes alive in our life. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You're not going to understand it. Your family's not going to get it. You're just going to have it. That peace of God that transcends understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The enemy's trying to attack our minds. He's trying to attack your heart. We need Jesus Christ guarding those places that the enemy tries to sneak into. The second thing, after praying about everything, is you need to think about the right things. Think about the right thing. Y'all, these are practical. You have to make a choice to do this, okay? The Holy Spirit is our helper. He will help you do these. The Bible doesn't say the Holy Spirit is our doer. He won't do these for you. He'll help you, but you've got to take some responsibility, and we need to think. We need to take captive. That's what one scripture says. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. That means 
Sometimes it's a fight. Take captive. Have you ever tried to put a kid in a car seat? I've had four of them. That's literally why I started training jujitsu. It was to put my kids in their car seat. You know, when something or somebody doesn't want to do something and you have to hold them captive, it, it's sometimes a struggle. It's going to take effort. It's going to take energy. And to think about the right things, again, is easier said than done, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. And the Word of God says, again, very next verse of Scripture, Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. So basically, whatever is not on mainstream media. <laughs> Seriously. Think about all the junk we put in our mind that's not this. And we let so much of it into our spirit. It says, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And this may take effort. This may take practice. But it goes on to say, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. I just It's not rocket science, y'all. If you don't have peace in your life, you need to put these things into practice in your life. If you're thinking about those things, you need to take captive those thoughts. For me, I'll just tell you for me, and this may, you may laugh at me, I sometimes will, will literally look in the mirror and confess things to myself because I need to look myself in the eyes because I'm not feeling it. But again, choices come first and then feelings follow. And I have to tell myself what scripture says because I'm, tr I'm trying to believe the lie in my flesh, in my mind, and, and, and I'm, I'm being overwhelmed, and I have to confess the word of God. That's how you remember who you are. God's word will tell you, but the words of, of this world, the words of the enemy will lie to you. So you need to learn to think about the right things. And, and when you pray about everything, when you think about the right things, this third step will start happening for you. You'll start to trust God in all things. I, I don't say this to make you feel bad if, if you have worry. It happens, but remember, the moment you start worrying is the same moment you stop trusting God. The two cannot coexist. When you have full faith in God, worry cannot reside in your heart and in your spirit. That's why the word of God says be anxious for nothing. And we think that means I just gotta stop worrying all the time, that's hard. No, just start trusting God. I legitimately have been having this happen more and more in my life, and this was not my nature. So don't think, well, just some people, that's their nature. If that is your nature, you need to put on the nature of Christ. You need to quit that mess, because that's not how you were created. We live in a sin-fallen war world. We're all born into sin. I don't want to just stay in that. I want to be like Jesus. He didn't live a life of war. Y'all, he, he knew his whole life he was going to be crucified. He knew his whole life he had an appointment with the cross. Can I tell you how messed up my week goes when I know I've got a dentist appointment? <laughs> I dread it. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? It changes what I eat. I try to eat all the things. Because I'm like, if they mess up my teeth, I won't be able to eat this ever again. You know, I'm just, you, it changes the way you act and react. And stuff. It's silly. We worry about these things that happen just even, and that's not even a bad... Dentists are there to help us, I think. I'm just kidding. I love dentists. I hope they all come to church and all tithe. Amen. <laughs> but seriously, do we trust God in all things? Or do we trust what we see? See, Scripture says in Philippians 4.12, Paul said, this while in prison, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. He's learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And this is when he says the big scripture, the one that we've learned since we were children, I can do all things through Christ. This translation says, I can do everything. That's in case you misunderstand what all means. The Greek word for all is everything. Through him, through Jesus. Of course you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. You're not. Jesus is gonna do this through you. You, you gotta do your part, but Jesus does all the hard stuff. It's just like salvation. You had to make a choice to give your life to Jesus, right? Right? To trust him for all of eternity. If you trust him that you're going to go to heaven, why don't you trust him that he can help you on earth? 
Why don't you trust him that even while I go through this stuff, he is with me. Then this scripture in Romans 8.31, I say it all the time or paraphrase it all the time. Romans 8.31 says, what then shall we say in response to these things? These things means the pandemic. These things means whoever's in the White House. These things mean if Iran or some country gets nuclear weapons or doesn't have nuclear weapons, whatever. Why do the nations rage when the king is on his throne? Because all these things we say in response, if God is for us, who can be against us? And seriously, don't let that be a slogan. Let that be a battle cry. The, the way that we live our life to say, man, I'm walking into this battle and the victory's already been won in Jesus' name. Amen. And just so you'll remember this, just so you remember this, I brought a visual aid. I'm not gonna climb on anybody's shoulders today because I wanna keep people coming to church, but... I noticed, I noticed Daniel said a little further in the aisle today, but thank you. But, you know, the thing is, we sing things like, uh, last week we sang a song that praise should be our weapon. This is a sword, y'all, a sword. If I walked around with this sword, like, I don't even know what I'm doing with this thing. Like, <laughs> why are you putting your hands up? She's praising the Lord down here. No, but when you walk around, like, if you swing, like, it's a sword. It's not a paper. This is like a sword. If I walked around with this in public, people would notice. <laughs> They'd probably get out of my way in Walmart. That lady with her buggy sideways in the cookie aisle every time. I'm in. <laughs> That's sign language for get out of my way, woman. No, but I mean, this is silly. Obviously, you don't want to walk around with a sword. I mean, you want to, but you shouldn't. <laughs> but when you swing this thing around, and again, I, I'm not even, I'm not even, if you saw me with this, you might think I'm a swordsman. I'm really not. I'm <laughs> big shock. I just have a sword, and it makes me look, you know, like I could cause some harm. I could do some damage. Y'all, is the power of God not more than this weapon? The Bible says we, we have spiritual weapons. We have spirit, we have authority, not because of us. This, this doesn't make me a good swordsman, but for some reason it draws it. Let everybody crane in your necks to look at me. Mm -hmm. I figured out I need to, instead of better preaching, I just need better props. Y'all listen. But in all seriousness, we have Christ in us. Do you know who that is? Do you know who that makes you? Do you get my point? So... When we talk about living in joy, remember this. It's, it's not a catchphrase. It's not a slogan. It's not just some cute thing I put in your notes. It's a biblical truth as evidenced by the story of Christ. And it's your final blank that I want to show you in just a minute. But on this joy journey we're in, we know the beginning already. Or we know the end already. We know how this all turns out. And Paul was able to write these words in Philippians 4 toward the end of this book. He says, greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. This is this guy writing from prison. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. Tell them about Jesus is what that means. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. And I think this is just a neat way of Paul saying, look, God's even getting a hold of people in Caesar's household even while I'm in prison. He's testifying of the good things of God. And he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The grace of Jesus. How amazing it is what God has done for you. You think Jesus would go through everything he went through on the cross to let you leave you hanging now? No, he hung on that cross and he won't leave us hanging in this life. Again, doesn't mean life's going to be perfect, doesn't mean life's going to be easy, but boy, it's going to be fulfilling. And you're going to find out if you'll follow Jesus, even if you go through the valley of the shadow of death, it's going to be the biggest adventure. Because God, I tell you, I don't mind going through scary things if I got somebody strong with me. I, I get to see all the cool stuff that's going to happen, and I get to see the victory that God has for me. Amen. And this is the truth I want you to remember. It's that joy wins. Would somebody say that with me? Joy wins wins because our joy comes from the Lord. It, that's the joy that should be our strength. And if our joy is in the Lord, it doesn't matter what happens in life. Ain't nothing going to happen to my joy. 
My joy is not in my circumstance. My joy is not in my bank account. My joy is not in my uh, successful career. My joy is not in my health. My joy is not in anything but in Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Lord. And if you're in this place today and you have not put your full trust in Jesus, there's nothing better. There is nothing better. And I, again, I, tell, I told you up front, Things are probably going to get worse in this old world. But there's nothing better to do than to trust in Jesus. Because when you trust Jesus, Romans 8, 28, it's a reality for you. All things will work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's how you have joy in the middle of crisis. You can be in crisis, but be in joy. And I've seen some of y'all live this out, so I know it's real. I know it's true. Your testimonies of it. It's amazing. But some of you don't know what that's like. And your faith, it falters. It, it goes away when troubles come. And I want to invite you to give your whole heart, your very life, put all your trust in God. And again, then that joy, it's a choice. God's not going to just do it all for you, but you can do all things. Through Christ who gives you strength. You can choose joy. Amen. Amen. You can, you'll learn to pray about all, everything instead of complaining about everything. You'll learn to think about the right things instead of the wrong, instead of the worry causing things. And you'll learn to trust God in everything. The first step is you got to know God for yourself. You got to make a decision now to say, I, I give you my life. If there's anybody here under the sound of my voice, or if you're watching online. If you're watching online, I'd love to hear from you if you make this decision. You can go to our website, lakeviewpeople.com slash prayer, and just put in there that you made a commitment for Jesus. But if you're in this place and you say, I need to, I'm tired of living in worry. I wanna live in Jesus. I wanna live in joy, and I want him to be my Savior, my Lord. Would you raise your hand quickly where you're at? I'd like to pray for you. You need to make that decision today. Amen. You can put your hands up. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. Yeah, you can put your hands down. Let's pray with these. What an incredible, what, what a bold decision. What a, what a great step you're taking. And I want you to know, again, this isn't just some, you know, magic moment where all of a sudden life may change completely, but you're going to change completely as you put your trust in God. You may still have to face those situations but you'll face them differently. They may, not, they may not be different, but you're gonna be different in the name of Jesus. Could we join together and pray? Heavenly Father, we stand before you thankful for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, we join our hearts with these who confess before you their need for you. God, we confess that we have all sinned. We've all fallen short of your glory. We cannot save ourselves. We are in need of a savior. Thank you for sending us one. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to live and then to die in our place so that we could have life through him. We put our faith, we put our trust in you, Lord, for our salvation. Your word says it's not because of anything we've done. We don't deserve it. We just receive it freely, your grace, by faith, in the name of Jesus. And God, we receive what your word says. When we give our life to you, we're a new creation. Help our faith to come alive in you, God. And help us choose every day to live for you and to live in joy. In Jesus' name, and all in agreement said, amen. Can we rejoice with those that made that all important? God bless you, people. Thank you, thank you. And I want to challenge you to make a choice to take it a step further. We, we've got connection cards in the seats around you. If you made that decision, I'd be so honored if you'd, you'd mark one and, and fill that out. And you may want to get water baptized. That might be your next step. That's what Jesus asked us to do, what he commanded us to do. He said, when you give your life to him, let other people know it. Go public with your decision. You can mark that on a connection card as well or on our website, lakeviewpeople.com slash baptism. If you're watching online, you want to be baptized. I, even if you don't live in the area, I'll help you find a church in your area or I'll come and meet you at a lake or something. That's where my daddy taught me to swim, so I'm good. But we need, to, we need to take it further in our relationship with the Lord. And before we close out today, I've asked Pastor Mark to lead us in one of the most sacred things we can do, which is observing communion, observing the Lord's Supper. This is Palm Sunday. This is leading up to that fateful day where Jesus 
was crucified, but then leading up to that glorious day where he rose again. And this is a reminder of what he did for us. So as Pastor Mark comes, would, would you get your communion elements out? And he'll give us instruction. And let's prepare to, to take part in this holy time together. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. If uh, you did not receive a communion element, if uh, Trent and BJ, if you guys would help me real quickly, just go ahead and, and get those. If you did not receive your communion elements, would you please raise your hand? And these gentlemen will be glad to serve you. Also, if you did receive your communion elements, you realize that they are portable, they are all self-contained, please pull that first little plastic wrapper back. Wait on that second one, but pull that first one back. Earlier in the service, as Victoria shared out of Psalm 100, the Bible says in Psalm 100, verse 3, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we're His. Acknowledge that. And this is just one of the ways. And if you need a uh, offering, uh, this is an open communion so everybody can receive. You don't have to be a member of our church. And so if you want to receive today and don't have an element, please just raise your hand. The guys will serve you. So acknowledge that the Lord, He is God. He made us and we're His. And one of the ways that we acknowledge that is this practice, the practice of the Lord's Supper. In reality, the remembrance of the Lord's Supper is one way to acknowledge that He's God, but it's another way to acknowledge our union in Christ. The Lord's Supper is a type of that union. It's actually emblematic of, of the atonement. The atonement. The atonement's a religious word, but it, what it really means, and if you look at the word, it means at one meant. At one minute. We're at one with Christ because of the atonement. This is what we will celebrate. This is what he was coming into the coming into the um, uh, into Jerusalem on this day. He was coming in as the risen as the king that would be sacrificed for you and me so that we could be made at one, not only with God, but with Jesus Christ. And in John 6, 56, Jesus said this, If you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. So through the new birth, we have become one with him. 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Colossians 2.10 said, So you are also complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and every authority. So we understand that we are one with Jesus Christ. And we are celebrating that today in communion. So if you'll take your element and first take the bread. Paul said this, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, 23, he said, For I received from the Lord that I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. Will you take your bread? And let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for sending Jesus to die for us. Lord, I thank you that we are one with him. And through the atonement, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, through his broken body on the cross, this bread represents the healing of the nations. Mind, spirit, body, our healing, our complete and total deliverance in body. Today, Lord, as we receive this, we believe that the Spirit of God that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead also quickens this mortal body. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll partake. Thank you.
then if you'll take your cup, pull back that uh, aluminum, be very careful. In the same way, Paul goes on, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We are in covenant. We're in union. He is our God. We are his people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blood, the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that not only covers our sin, but eliminates sin in our life. Sin no longer having dominion over us. We've been set free. We receive this in remembrance and celebrate our union with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Daniel. If you'll just put your uh, cups in the seat pocket in front of you, uh, somebody will uh, get those later. I muted myself. Could you stand with me, please? And before we uh, dismiss from the service, I do want to just pray a blessing over you, but I want to ask the prayer team if they would come forward at this time. And if you have a prayer need for anything, We'll stay and pray with you as long as you need. I know some of you have to get to work even this afternoon or to things today, but if, but if you are in need of prayer, please don't leave this place uh, without coming forward. And you can move even now if you want to come forward for prayer. And I, I specifically want to invite, if there's anybody that you have been dealing with anxiety and stress and worry, God, God promised me he was going to set some people free today if you'll make the choice to, to put your trust in him. And some of you, you're believers, you're, you're followers of Jesus, but you've been attacked, and that's what it is. We would love to stand in agreement with you against that attack of the enemy. Don't walk out of here letting those demonic thoughts and feelings follow you out. I, I declare over you goodness and mercy. That's what should be following you around all the days of your life. So while I pray over you, if you need prayer, come forward, and then after we pray, you'll be dismissed. And, uh, we'll worship out of here. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you've done for us today, but more importantly, thank you for what you did so long ago, sending Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we need your help. We need your guidance to, to live this life so we make the choice to trust you as our comfort, our friend, our, our Lord. And God, I just ask for you to help those that have whatever need they're facing, let them realize you are the answer, to look to you in all things, to trust you in everything. Pray about everything. Think about the right things and trust you in every situation, God. We know you'll help us, and we're making the choice to follow your will, follow your instructions. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And all in agreement said, one more time, can we give him praises? We head out this morning. God bless you. Go with God, and if you need prayer, come forward at any time.